Okay, right, guys, so, um, basically, if you remember this equation here, the one at the top, okay, we can see that if we want to work out what the specific heat capacity is, which is C, remember, C for capacity, if we want to work out what the specific heat capacity is, we need to know the energy or the change in energy, the energy transferred, the energy that I've transferred to the object. We need to know the mass of the object and we need to know the change in temperature. So all you have to do for this practical, all you have to think is, how am I going to heat something up? How am I going to measure the energy? How am I going to measure the mass? And how am I going to measure the change in temperature? So all you need is those things, okay? It might seem really complicated, but if you can think, how am I going to measure each of the things in the equation, that's how we're going to do this experiment. So the way we do this, I'm going to heat up this metal block, okay? Now, this metal block here, okay, um, really what I should be doing is I should be taking this and putting it on a balance to measure its mass. Okay, however, we can see on here, you probably can't quite see on there, but this is a one kilogram block. So I know the mass of this block. Okay, I know the mass of the block, but I, um, so really we should be writing that we're going to place it on a balance and we're going to measure its mass. So that gets us, okay, if I put that back in there, that gets us the mass. So in terms of writing down what we, uh, how we're going to make these measurements, the mass on the equation we are going to use a balance, okay? So we can say that we are going to use a balance to measure the mass, okay? Right, let's look at the other things. How am I going to physically heat it up, okay? So the way that I'm going to heat this thing up is I'm going to use this here, okay? Now this is a heating element, it's just a heater basically, and it's an electrical one, so it's, it's hooked up to a power pack. When I turn it on, this is going to get hot, and I'm going to put it in here, now, because it's a metal block, it's a solid object, you need something where you, like, we've got a hole drilled in. These are designed for this, okay? But you could use this with water. If you have be uh, a beaker of water, you could place it in a beaker of water. There's all the different things that you can do. So we're going to heat this up by placing the heating element inside the metal block here, okay? Sometimes you can put a bit of oil in there just to make sure there's no gaps and there's, there's a good contact, but we don't really need to, Okay. So we're going to heat this thing up by placing the heater in there and we're going to turn it on and we're going to heat yeah, we're going to transfer energy to this metal block and quite obviously the metal block's temperature is going to increase. Okay? Well, how do we actually measure the energy then? So we, we know we're heating it up, we're transferring energy to it, we're doing it electrically rather than a Bunsen burner so that we can actually measure the electricity. And what we're going to use is this thing here, okay? This is a joule meter. Now you um you may or may not have covered the like covered the electric electrical circuit stuff, okay, at this point. But um, there are things like ammeters that can measure electrical current in amps. There are voltmeters which measure potential difference in volts. This thing here is an is a joule meter, and it will measure um, electrical. Uh, so it will measure the energy transferred, and it will measure it in joules. Okay, now. <coughs> um, this thing, basically, I've got a power pack. The energy goes through the joule meter to the heating element, uh, and this thing kind of measures the amount of energy that goes through it. So we're going to use this directly to measure energy. We don't need to worry about ammeters and voltmeters and that kind of thing. So let's add that to our equation here. So the energy transferred is going to be measured using a joule meter. Okay, so again, we're looking at our equation here. So we've got the specific heat capacity is the energy transferred over the mass times the change in temperature, we know how we're measuring the mass, we know how we're measuring the energy transferred, so now we need to think about the temperature. So this thing's going to heat up, okay? So we've got the metal block here which is going to heat up, it's going to increase in temperature, and to do that, and to measure the temperature, obviously I need a thermometer. Now, I'm not actually really interested in what temperature this thing is, I mean I'm going to need to know, but that's not what goes into the equation. What goes into the equation is the change in the temperature. So I need to know the starting temperature. So we leave this in for a couple of minutes and you allow it to, to kind of like match up to this, the level. Um, I obviously have to pull this out just a little bit here just to see the value. And that's currently a, a nice 16 degrees, okay, which is why I've got a jacket on today because it's so cold in here. So my starting temperature is 16 degrees. Uh, let's just put on our equation that we're using a thermometer. It might seem obvious that you're using a thermometer to measure the temperature, but you're not going to get a mark for it unless you write it down. Okay, so I'm going to put here that my starting temperature is uh, 16 degrees C. 
is my start. Okay, and then I'm gonna heat, I'm gonna turn it on, we're gonna allow it to heat up, and we are going to um, then see what the temperature is after a while, okay? It doesn't really matter how long you leave it for. I'll turn it on, uh, well, I'll turn it on in a second. It doesn't really matter how long you leave it for. If you leave it for a longer amount of time, then you're gonna get more energy, you're gonna get a bigger change in temperature, which can be good in some ways, because um, you're, you're reducing the uncertainty on that change in temperature. But if you, get, if you leave it so that it gets really hot, then your results are gonna become less accurate because um, when it gets really hot, you've got lots of energy being lost out of, the, out of the block. So we put some insulation around it to try and reduce the amount of energy lost from the system. But if you, if you leave this on for ages and it gets really hot, then you've got so much energy being lost that you're, you're gonna ruin your results anyway. So we'll turn it on now and we'll see what happens, okay? I'm turning it on, I've got it on as high a power as I can get there. Um, and we will see, um, so long as it's all working, we'll see this joule meter, <laughs> which let's we'll, we'll try. We might have to try this again in a second. There we go. So we can now see the joule meter. Okay, is starting to tick now. The way I've got this set up. Now you you don't need to know about this exact exact brand of joule meter. Okay, you just need to say the joule meter will give us an answer. Okay, of energy. But the way I've got this set up is that each time this clicks over to to like one, two, three, etc., that's a hundred joules of energy. So that's four hundred joules of energy because it says four. It's going to say ready five hundred joules of energy. So we can allow this to keep clicking on, and we can let some energy in. So, um. Whilst we're doing this, what there's, there is a, a more advanced method, okay, which I'm going to talk about in a, in a future lesson. There's a more advanced method that you can use where we plot some, we'll plot a graph, of, a graph of our results and you would need to record the temperature every, so like you might have like every thousand joules you'll record the temperature. So I might wait till it says 10 here, so that would be a thousand joules, okay, and I would see what the temperature is right now and then I would keep doing that every thousand joules and we would be able to plot a graph of results but I'm going to talk about that about that in more detail another time okay so for now I'm just going to wait till it says say I'm just going to wait till it says 15 here okay and then we will see what the temperature is so um, you could go you could go like say for as, as long as you want really okay so I'm going to wait till it says 15 so that's 14 and Ready for 15, so let's see what the temperature is, and that says now 18 degrees, okay? So I'm just going to pause there, so we'll turn that off, okay, we'll turn this off, um, we'll leave that out of the way, okay? Now, if my end temperature now, so my end temperature is 18 degrees Celsius, okay? My energy transferred, it said 15 on there, so that's 1,500 joules. So what I've got is 1,500 joules divided by the mass of one kilogram times by my change in temperature. So if we look here, I've got 1,500 joules is my energy transferred. I've got one kilogram is my mass and my change in temperature is gonna be two degrees, okay? It's two degrees. Remember, it doesn't matter if it's 16 to 18 like we had here or it could be 68 to 70 or 192 to 194 it really doesn't matter the change in temperature is what i'm interested in so i could put this into a calculator if i wanted to but i'm hoping that you all agree we don't need to so 1500 divided by 2 is 750 okay so i would be able to find my specific heat capacity of 750 degrees so that is the uh, 700 did i say degrees 750 750 joules per kilogram degree celsius okay i don't know why i said degrees there because i'm tired 750 joules per kilogram degree celsius okay so this is how the experiment works that's the simple version where we just wanted one value for this one value for this and one value for this and we can do a calculation in terms of writing about the experiment you all you need to think of is how am i heating it up so describe the physical practical and then how do I measure these three things? Okay, that's all you need to do. How am I heating it up? How do I measure the energy? How do I measure the mass? How do I measure the change in temperature? 
There's a more complicated way of analyzing the data, but we'll talk about that another time, okay?